Hi everyone, Abby here. Today's video is going to be a little bit controversial. Some people are not going to like hearing it, some people will, but we're going to be addressing the problem with support players' mindset because I've been seeing a lot of reaction to the news about support, play uh, support heroes getting nerfed. The players that are, let's say, in the lower elos or don't actually understand what support is meant to be as a role are losing their minds, pulling their hairs, all that type of stuff, making all sorts of weird arguments, going as far as to trying to use numbers that no, 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 supports are not that strong, even though there's been countless videos of very, very strong plays getting out healed, no ultimates being used, no, no trade-offs, nothing. So we're going to sit down, we're going to talk about this today, we're going to finalize support as a role and an understanding in this role um, of what it's supposed to do, what do we want support to be in Overwatch um, 2, because that era of <clears throat> Overwatch 1 is over. Uh, before we get on with this video, I do have a bit of a sore throat. As we speak, I'm drinking some coffee alongside it. So if I pause at any moment, I'm just taking a small sip. And, you know, this is the only free time I get to really sit down and make some videos. So just bear with me. All right, so let's get started. The general consensus that I've been seeing going around from the support players who are a little bit, you know, let's say, um, not the best in the world. Let's say casuals and things like that. The consensus has basically been, so you want supports to be a free kill. You don't want supports to be able to make plays you know things like this all, uh, along these lines i'm sure you guys have seen these topics as well now before we talk about it i want to kind of clear something up in case one of those people are watching this video or they like rage clicked on this thing like, oh my god mr youtuber is very dumb why is he saying these things when we look at the game we have these classes that are these roles let's say right they're called roles classes whatever you want to call them they are divided into jobs that they have to do Right, and then there are sub archetypes within those roles that do those jobs in different different ways. Right, tank is about a lot of different things. Right, tank is about damage. Tank is about creating space, maintaining space, denying space, pressure, disruption. You know, crowd control, all sorts of that type of stuff. Which means that their kit is going to look um, something that is all about kind of controlling the space. Right, that's what they're going to look like. Um, you, you'll see this in other games as well uh, with bruiser characters to a certain extent they're a lot more damage focused but tank and bruiser characters in other games like let's say league of legends or Tears of the storm or any other game that has this category even paladins um, and things like that right they're designed to kind of be like a soft raid boss where okay we have to be smart with how we engage this guy or we take this guy out as a team and that's fine right so we understand and respect that that's what the role is going to do Damage role is a, a role designed to do damage. In Overwatch, we have 17, I believe, different damage heroes, or 18 now with that, um, Soldier, I'm not exactly sure. And it's just, <clears throat> we have two sub arch types in them. We have hit scan and Projectile, or hit scan and Flex DPS. And, you know, I don't want to get too much into it, but there, it's different flavors of, uh, different flavors of doing that damage, counterpicking, uh, finding new ways to apply pressure to the enemy composition, um, securing kills, deciding to fight the front line, deciding to fight uh, from taking flanks on the back line. So that's kind of the rhythm and, and structure of tank and dams. Now, what do we want support to be? Before we talk about support, we have to talk about the philosophy of what supports looked like early Overwatch. And bear in mind that early Overwatch won game of the year. Why? Because supports had a role in this game, right? They were designed to do something. Again, I'm going to exclude uh support symmetra from this conversation because she's a completely different topic and she doesn't she didn't fall into this arch type and while blizzard could have made it work they just decided to rework her into a dps because that's what they wanted for her so for the supports we're going to talk about early supports in overwatch one's life and that's anna lucio mercy and zen okay um when overwatch one came out and let's just like go to the era where anna came with it so season season two basically right at that point, Overwatch not only had become a Game of the Year nominee, it was widely loved. It had its silliness, but the support role had a dedicated idea going into it, that there was a unique class designed to enable the people in front of them while having tools to deal with backline flankers or, you know, specific compositions while all of them each had a weakness. Now, let's talk about those characters. We've got Mercy, Lucio, Zen, and Ana. Now, I'm going to kind of try my best to keep this simple because I tend to extend my videos out and most likely this one will be extended too. But when Mercy came out, other than Mass Res, um, which was like a <laughs> huge problem itself, you know, Mercy's trade-off with her kit is that she can only do 
one thing at a time. If she's healing, that's the only thing she can do. If she's damage boosting, that's the only thing she can do, right? And her movement wasn't as evolved to what it is now. Back then, a lot of Mercy players were just walking around GF from one target to another, etc., etc. They didn't even have Valkyrie, so she was a lot more grounded, right? So the thing, uh, the price that uh, Mercy players had to pay, they relied a lot on the person that they were pocketing, and they relied a lot on the concept that somebody peeled for them because if they start defending themselves, uh, and, and Mercy has good damage on her. Let's not kid ourselves. Mercy has some really good damage on her in 1v1 duels. But the problem with Mercy's damage is the, the moment you access it, your team mates in front of you lose the inherent value that you bring as a support character. So there's the weakness in design, right? If you go over to Lucio, right? Even Lucio, let's talk about Lucio's state in Overwatch 2 and Overwatch 1, a little mix of it. Lucio came with this design philosophy too, where, you know, he was a jack of all trades, master of none. He had decent damage. Uh, he had a very strong boop back in Overwatch 1, but in Overwatch 2, it's like, meh, it's probably the worst boop in the game right now. He has a really good defensive ultimate. Primarily, it's a defensive ultimate, and secondarily, it can be used for engagements. And the same goes for Zenyatta on this topic as well. And in Lucio's case, he didn't really excel at anything, but you picked him for the AoE heals, and most importantly, the AoE speed. The AoE speed allowed very fast-paced engagements, and that's what made Lucio strong. Right? So whenever you pick Lucio, you weren't thinking about doing damage or anything like that. You thought about supporting your teammates in a unique way in a first-person shooter game. Right? When you pick Mercy, you think about turning one of your best mates into a raid boss that is not going to be contested in that lobby. Right? And if he does get contested, he needs to get good at the game. Right? It happens to all of us. I am also of that note. Zenyatta also had a trade-off. He was a glass cannon support that could do high damage, but the trade-off was his lack of mobility and his lack of healing with the Harmony Orb, right? But the strength in Discord Orb and <clears throat> his um, sniper, like projectile sniper playstyle was very efficient at what it needed to do. And Ana was very similar in this regard too. She had a very powerful kit. She had a little bit of AoE to her, but mostly she was single target focused, right? And while we can talk about Nade and everything, Let's kind of ignore that for now. There was the trade-off that Ana is immobile, and if she doesn't land her skill shots in the sleep dart or a decent-ish nade to find value in shutting down the target um, that's on her, she is going to get deleted, right? And this brings us to what I would say back then were balanced supports. They each had a weakness to themselves, and the way you counteracted these weaknesses was by telling each other that, hey, there's somebody on me, I need you to help me. And what I recommend to a lot of support players nowadays, if there's a flanker on you, just go up to one of your DPS teammates. Why do you stand there and, and feel this need to take a duel? I get it. You want to try and kill them. You can try your best to kill them, but it's, it's a good idea to force a 2v1 or a 3v1 by just walking up to your team and, and forcing that flanker to look at three teammates that are now aware that there's this flanker right next to us because they feel the pressure and presence of them behind them, right? That is a potential that you can do, a, a, a potential playstyle that you can do. Now, as we start to move on from Overwatch's um, uh, little bubble, as we start to go into the characters that came out after that, progressively, you will see a trend, okay? In this trend, a lot of the newer heroes are upgraded versions of the past heroes trying to make up for the weaknesses that they had. And in turn, the supports after Ana have all been in some shape or form very strong in their ability to do a little bit of everything with almost no trade-off. And that is where the frustration stems towards the support uh, heroes right now and why nerfs are being called for them. And let's be real and let's be fair. It is true. Just because you are unable to find value on a support character that is very strong right now, because of your lack of mechanical skill or whatever, that doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. We have to think about the maximum potential of a character when we think about balancing them, when we think about the state of the game. We cannot assume that everybody's incapable. There are more than enough people that more often than not will be capable of doing uh, the strong stuff about a character, let's say Iliari, more often than not with a little bit of practice and time. So we have to stop viewing people from these lenses that, well, just because I can do it doesn't mean the hero's OP. It means the hero's bad because I can do it. It's like, well, perhaps you should get a little bit better at the game. Now, 
how does this correlate to support player mindset? We're, we're getting there in just a moment. I need to talk about uh, what happened to the support role. And the trend was, was with every new support that came out, Moria, Brick, and Bap, you could see that they just wanted to reduce the concept of weaknesses. For example, Moira, they gave her a unique like lifesteal thing where they just, you know, the, uh, I, I get the whole mechanics with recharging her heals and everything, but the lifesteal thing has always been something so awkward to me. I don't mind it. I'm not against it. It shouldn't be removed. But it just made me feel like it's to, it's to make that support player feel good that even... Even if you're struggling with such a low aim intensive character, there's a there's a way that you're going to feel rewarded. And this pattern started to continue throughout all the supports as they came out that, okay, even if you didn't do that right, there's a way that you got rewarded. For example, Brigida could just exist and breathe on someone and she would get her inspire off and start healing people, right? And that's kind of, that, that that's like in my past videos when I spoke about supports, I basically said, Blizzard has babied the support role because as much as I hate to say this, support role does have the most crybabies, right? They, they have the most crybabies, they have the most amount of people that refuse to improve, and they constantly beg for their role to be able to do everything. Well, if that's the case, why shouldn't tank and damage be allowed to be extremely overpowered then? Why should they be toned down for support as a role to feel better, and then at the same time while they're getting toned down, support as a role gets tuned up? Was that really necessary? So that's why we're trying to balance supports right now is because without a doubt, supports are a little bit overtuned, right? Baptiste and Iliari especially can do more damage than the DPS role. Is that something that we should expect from supports? Is that something that most support players, even in the casual community, wants? That, hey, I might be a fan of Bap and Iliari, but I'm not good mechanically, and if I don't perform on them, I'm just throwing... It doesn't make the player feel good now, does it? Because there's... Their capabilities as a support isn't to actually quote unquote support, it's to, well, go kill something. Otherwise, the, ma the maximum value from this character is greatly reduced. You're better off playing like Life Weaver and Moira and Heal Botting, right? Anyways, moving on. So, if you look at, you know, we spoke about Moira and now the, the evolution. From Moira, we went to Baptiste, and with Baptiste, it was almost as if they were designing this character. So, it was Brigida that came out next, right? Brigida was supposed to be the dive counter, and the idea behind her was, okay, like, you know, this is what the casual uh, support players or low elo players don't like. Let's give them a tool to skip a part of the game's skill curve and just deal with these characters by learning these few combos. They even showed off combos, like, of how you can one-shot Tracer and things like that, right? And it was incredibly frustrating to see that if you play damage, uh, especially, given, like, how as the game evolves, damage as a role in and an overall perspective becomes incredibly difficult to play, and I really hope we can fix this in the mid-season patch, right? And from Brigida, we went over to Baptiste, who enabled another form of degenerate, like just this degenerate style comp of, well, we don't need to play the game like it's a shooter, we just need to play it like it's a MOBA and, and just play grouped up together. And if we make a mistake, I will erase it with a button press. I will erase it with a button press. And that's kind of where we've ended up with. We started to go in this direction where we have all these button presses that do stuff for us. The mortality field is a problem. It's, it's nothing to ignore that it does. Basically, I press this button, I get a second HP bar. Uh, in total, BAP can have a comp uh, four HP bars. Like if the, To the BAP, these players out there, they know the trick. I'm not going to talk about it right now. I plan on doing a Baptiste guide and I'm going to show that uh, trick off over there unless Blizzard addresses how BAP, uh, BAP's HP pool and everything basically works. But really good Baptiste players understand how to technically have quote unquote four HP bars and he's basically a mini tank support and damage hero all in one. And that's too much. Iliari kind of falls into the same thing that she basically brings a another person she basically brings a mercy pocket that can't damage boost and just heal bots while she can do whatever she wants and there's never a point where there's downtime in iliari's kit that oh okay i might have gotten out of range from the pylon uh maybe the pylon after 10 seconds goes on cooldown and i have to put it up again so it, it th there's so many problems with how they've designed support to do everything kiriko as well we've talked about suzu a million times and the way it interacts uh, and how it can shut down different forms of engagement in this game or 
um, how incredible she was when she first came out with her Kitsune Rust, just overwhelming people with how fast you could be. If you could keep up with that, you could dominate games for free. And, you know, her launch damage has now been changed. The multiplier has been changed, but she's still incredibly strong. Now she can rapid fire those kunais. And so that's, that's the problem right now. Like support as a role, but like particularly most of them, not all of them, but do, most of them are in a situation where they're incredible duelists. So what do we mean by duelists in case people are unfamiliar? Duelist is basically like what happens when that support is in a 1v1. And basically for characters like Ana, Bap, and really smart Brigida players, Ilyari, Kiriko, right? Zenyata, these characters, when it comes to 1v1s, they have a lot of advantages. Zenyata has the biggest projectile in the game. Discord orb and the and the support, all of them have the support passive. That's a big advantage, number one. If they can, you know, if they like jiggle peak corners or something like that. Number two, right? Kiriko, her entire kit, so many escapabilities, tiniest hitbox in the game, etc. etc. Eliari. Do I really need to explain how Iliari, Bap, and Ana are really good at 1v1? So, and, and Brigida as well. So we've kind of, we've moved, especially with the with the uh, uh, damage increase on her flail. So we've moved away from this feeling of supports are helpless the moment they're exposed. I, I feel like the reality, reality check a lot of support players need when it comes to their mindset is they actually, some of them or most of them actually want to play the damage role but because they're not competent when it comes to characters with high learning curves and things like that and me mechanical gameplay and because the dps roster doesn't really have like quote unquote easy characters other than maybe bastion and torb and i suppose junkrat and may to a certain extent or sim uh but even then you can feel very overwhelmed on them if if the, the enemy dps is just something that has more power and utility um they flock over to the support role and and then because on support there's never a window for okay i did something wrong like in theory you know you could always make arguments that hey me dpsing as ana over here was a good thing because i killed somebody and yeah maybe i traded one life but i got a pick and now and then we steamrolled that fight and we won and then that ana player can also make the argument that well i was healing my teammate and he steamrolled somebody and we won so i don't need to dps on ana to climb right so you can see where this is going right and we're seeing this a lot with the different unranked to GMs and the different playstyles we're seeing from support supports have a lot of flexibility, right? But the casual players, the people that don't understand how to ext extract this much value, find so much power in these support heroes, they want easy way outs. And I'm sorry, but if we want Overwatch to stay a competitive, competitive and healthy game in the way that we play it and everybody equally gets to enjoy it, a role cannot be good at everything. And I'm not calling for hardcore nerfs. I'm calling for trade-offs. I really, really want this to be understood towards the support community. That a lot of uh, a lot of the, uh, if you don't fit into this, don't take it personally. But if you do fit into this, and you're like you're that support player that vines that you just want this to be a free kill, or you don't want supports to be able to do anything, you're gonna cry when the healing is low. First of all, no, we're not. Like it's a shooter game. <laughs> Keeping the healing low is not necessarily a bad thing because we want a lot of the fights to be like a, a an expression of skill whether it's mechanical or game knowledge, game sense wise, right? And the person who triumphs over the other should be rewarded. Yeah, you can extend that person's fight to a certain extent, but if that person cannot turn that fight around, we shouldn't be able to throw open in mortality, negate all the mistakes and turn the team fight around for free, right? So to, towards those support players and their mindset is, it's just a really poor mindset to have. You have to understand how to take your battles uh, when and where you can and you cannot. And there has to be a level of what we can and cannot do on support and we need to create trade-offs right baptiste is a character who can do it all okay iliari is a character who can do it all anna is a character who can do it all granted that she may not be as problematic as bap and iliari right brig and kiriko are also characters that can do it all i actually really like life weaver because his entire playstyle just promotes him to being a heal bot and his damage is okay he's really good in 1v1s if you know how to control his um Torn volleys and you know how to isolate people into closed rooms and just delete them like trust me please don't sleep on life fever's damage in 1v1s in closed rooms trust me you can <laughs> there's some amazing 1v1s i've had uh playing as him lately it's very very enjoyable so a lot of it just comes down to mindset and a lot of these supports want to play the damage role but they don't want to play damage because it's too demanding and they want to play support because there's easy way outs to a lot of different situations of 
okay, if I can't kill something, I can heal something. If I can heal something, I can also kill something. And if I just want to, like, uh, if I don't want to heal my team and I want to play damage and, and something like that, I can go Iliari. Um, and the list kind of goes on. And it's basically like support players have to accept that their role is about supporting their team. And that is going to mean that, unfortunately, you are going to be the one that's going to be vulnerable one way or another. Because that's just how the role is designed. Again, nobody is saying you should be a free kill. But what we are trying to say, and I also say this as someone who has a lot, and I mean a lot of hours on support, is we just want to create a situation where supports can have trade-offs that if a support messed up, just like damage and tank, they should be able to be punished. If not, then we're always going to be in this horrible meta where nothing dies, everything gets out healed. Like if anybody has seen the nanoblade clip from Hiku, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, where he nanobladed and just, I believe, Bap and Iliari, or was it Ana and Iliari? I can't remember. Basically, it was two main healing supports. One of them was Iliari for sure. And there was three raw healing sources. There was no ultimates being traded. There was no cooldowns being used. They just looked at that Cassidy and they healed him through Nanoblade. Nanoblade has always been the tried and true combo in this game of the highest damage burst damage combo on Squishies. And if we have reached a point now that Nanoblade can easily be out healed by competent support players, you don't have to be top 500 or GM to do that. You just need to do your bare minimum and be smart with your positioning. Then I do believe we are in trouble that we do need to look at the support role and I feel like the developers understand this and it's time the support players understand this too so please improve your mindset stop victimizing yourself that oh I will be the free kill you don't you can't you can, you won't be the free kill be smart bait them into your team get good at AD strafing get good at fighting back but you shouldn't be given so much tools in your kit that you can make up for so many of your mistakes and get away with it again it's all about trade-off. That's my opinion. I really hope that going forward, we can improve the general mindset uh, of these type of support players. Not all support players, because there are support players out there that do understand that the role is overtuned. And they are also advocates that, yeah, we should kind of tone this down. It's getting kind of silly. But to the other support players that feel this way, that, no, I need more tools. I need more tools to help me do whatever I want and play whatever I want. That's just not fair, right? It's not fair, it's a team-based game. There's something that your role will excel in, and that's perfectly fine. And if it's a damage-based character, then the trade-off should be that your healing should be low. I've always viewed it like that. Zenyatta is a great example. If you're a damage-focused support, your healing overall on that support hero should be low. That's just the way I see it, right? And then if your healing is high, your damage should be mediocre to low. Because, again it's like a design philosophy that this is how we're going to design them and then your kit whether you're high healing support or low healing support that's designed to support and enable or dis uh, disable uh, enable your teammates or disable the enemy team in different ways a great example is life fever he's a heal bot his damage is mid-tier it's nothing too special his kit is overall really fun to play and really fluid in what it wants to do his animations are a little bit wonky and weird but i've gotten used to them honestly but what I love about him is, other than Tree of Life being, again, a little bit too strong, he's very honest in his gameplay. He's just a heal bot. That's all he does. So when you play against him, and he's very vulnerable to getting flanked, he has a big hitbox, and yeah, he might have some great escape tools, but nothing he does is overpowered. Tree of Life is a different story, and Tree of Life just needs a little bit of number adjustments. That's it. Otherwise, out of all the new supports and the overtuned supports right now, Life Weaver is probably the most balanced one. I would argue that maybe Lucio Mercy and Zen are a little bit undertuned in the current state of the game and meta, but let's see what the future holds for us. And let's deal with this hybrid support problem and come back and look at the role and give our honest opinions. Once again, I have over a thousand hours on the support role. Most of my playtime is on Ana. And I loved her because if I didn't do something right, I got punished for it and it encouraged me to get better at the game. And I would implore a lot of support players that may disagree with my views that, no, I, I don't want to be punished or whatever, that please adopt the mindset of improvement. This game, its improvement curve is a ladder. And on a ladder, you cannot jump and reach the top. A ladder is about climbing. Take it as a day-by-day, game-by-game process. All right? 
I know all of you out there watching this video can be the best players if you choose to be just by believing in yourself. And that's my message to support players out there that might be feeling distraught that my role is going to become bad and I'll be a free kill. You're not going to be a free kill. You're going to be a free kill if you think that way and you play that way. If you play smart and if you play true and if you play safe and you know your positioning, you know how to move around the map and how to take team fights with your team, you're going to be just fine. But holy crap, I can't wait for Babin and to get left. Anyways, guys, with that being said and the little motivational speech being done, if you guys want to support the channel for free, I would gladly appreciate it by hitting subscribe and like. It helps the channel grow, helps my videos get around. And most importantly, if you'd like to support me financially and help a brother eat, then feel free to send me a super chat donation. I'm still working on Patreon and the subscription thing on YouTube. So those will come in the next week, hopefully. And, you know, I would appreciate any form of support. You guys don't necessarily have to do it. But if you do do it, I love you a lot and it means the world to me. In general, I love all of you. For those that have stuck with me in the comments, I do know who you are. I do recognize all of you. It means the world to me. And I do my best to always reply to everybody. And I hope you guys can see that in all the videos. This channel has been my only shining light. And I continue to hope that it, we can just increase this light and reach out to more and more people. With that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.